range of collars launching for 2014. Now there's some awesome new fabrics used, really high tech stuff. It was originally designed for the latest America's Cup. It's a carbon spectra woven fabric. It's related to the stuff they use for the bulletproof vests. Now it doesn't hold water, so you won't soak up water, which it won't um, gain any weight. It's super tough, as you're about to see. And it's all, all these collars are made here in New Zealand. So Joel, what sets a Game Gear collar apart from others? Well, I think the, the key thing is uh, testing, trialing and, and refining. You know, days like today where we um, work with new collars, um, hunters that we've got out there using our gear that are uh, responding to us and advising us on ways to make things better. And it's been an evolution since 2007 when we started that we've uh, grown, expanded and increased the range every year with uh, new refined products. So these new collars incorporate the latest in fabrics, uh, the latest technology that was designed for the America's Cup and we believe they are a big step forward for uh, protection for your valuable hunting dogs. Yeah, I can't get over how light it is too. Yeah, the, the big thing is weight. Um, two styles of collar, we run a, a heavy collar for hard out holding dogs. We also run a, a lighter weight collar for smaller uh, baling style dogs. The benefit of the lighter weight collar is flexibility. The downside, if there is one, is a little bit less protection. So if you're running your harder dogs, you definitely go for the, the tougher collar. The, the collar that's designed for those those sort of harder applications, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think the, the key thing is uh, the way we layer the fabric. Um, we use a different layering system for the heavier collars. Um, this layering system adds additional protection for bigger, stronger holding dogs. Um, it does make the collar a wee bit stiffer, but it does increase the protection twice or threefold. So uh, certainly as horses for courses, you really want to pick the collar that is suitable for the style of dog you're running. So enough about all this talking, mate. I'm keen to put these to work and see what we can come up with. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can just show you guys how strong these collars really are. So first up, we've got a few tests we're going to try. I'll just introduce you to our local boar basher. Just a half a boar's jaw, taped on there, cable tied on, nice and strong, so we can really give it a good whack. That should give it a good, a good strong test because those tusks are nice and sharp. Let's go. Right, let's do it, eh? She's right in the water, man. Alrighty. Bring it up. So what do we have there, Joe? We've tested two things there. We've tested the strength and... Uh... Yep, so she's gone for a swim. But you can see, this is where I've hit it here. Right on the logo, look. It's hit through that logo. It hasn't punctured through there. So that's a fairly solid whack with a um, you know reasonable little tusk there going straight at it. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I put a bit of berries into it. That's what we want to see. Alright, let's give it a go, eh? <laughs> let's just check this collar. So that's where it was there, eh? Just hit on the edge of the webbing. So that's the second knock this one's taken, and that was a fairly full swing. Yeah, there's the first one. Shit, yeah. So it's holding up bloody well. Let's do it again, eh? Man, it's quite cool, eh? So let's see the effect on both things here. Yeah, let's have a look at the collar and the jaw. Yeah, we can see. That was the hit, just up in here somewhere. There's a first hit there, the first attempt. So there's our, our boar basher. You can see the jaws starting to actually come out of place. It's probably not going to last too many more hits. He's gone a bit lopsided, that boar. <laughs> He's not happy. No. I'd say that's 3-0 uh, to the rip collar so far. Yeah, no, this stuff's actually real good, eh? And uh, two water hazards for you, Joe. Yeah, mate, I'm a champion golfer. <laughs> right, so we've, got a, so we've got a set up on the fence here. Just gives a little bit more resistance. Can you imagine if your dog was pressed up against the bank of a creek 
and the ball was just laying into him. He's not got too much give, so yeah, this will give it a good good testing. Now they're designed for your your harder, more gritty dogs, you know, a bit more protection in the shoulders, up under the chin there, and your extra reinforcing in the brisket there. So with, when your dog's holding, generally come up under here. So yeah, it's, it's real good protection there, and it'll save a lot of vet bulls. We'll give it a few hits and see how we go. Right. Yeah. Alright, so as you saw, we gave it a few good whacks. Try to emulate what a ball would do. You can see there's one, one um, hit there that's gone through the first layer. But in theory, that's a four five hundred dollar vet bill usually, with the vets I go to anyway. So it saved you from that. You've had a few hits up in the brisket there, but it's hardly even touched them, hardly even even made a mark. So you're really happy with how that's going. It's going to save your dog big time. We'll just zoom in for a closer look. Although it's gone through that first layer, there's still three more layers underneath that. And you can see in the brisket chest area, there's a few scuffs on the surface, but nothing's penetrated at all. Right, Joel, so I'm pretty happy with how these going. What about you? Yeah, I've wrapped with the performance. We've... Uh tried to emulate a, a true hunting scenario here and we've given it the Happy Gilmore test with a good tusk and they've come through pretty well. Is there anything else we can do? What, what do you yeah, reckon? Yeah look I'm, testing wise I'm, I'm not 100% sure Joe what else we can do to trial this but uh, leave it with me mate let me just think on uh, what the next test might be for these collars. Now we're talking. Give me a go with that. Right, Joel, now we'll see some real shooting, mate. What you'll probably miss. <laughs> so when Joel came up with this crazy idea with shooting it with the shotgun, I don't know what to think. I don't even think he knew what he was talking about. But after collecting it from the tree, we were massively surprised. About 80% of the pellets had been stopped from penetrating completely through the collar. I'll just zoom in here so you can have a closer look. Those bulges you're seeing are the pellets stuck halfway through the layers. Now we're really keen to cut this open and get some of these pellets out and have a look. Joel's got a knife handy so he starts sawing away at the first couple of layers. So you'll just start to see a pellet showing itself. Joel pokes the tip of the knife in and flicks it out into the palm of my hand. And there you go there. So it just goes to show our new elite range of rip collars and chest plates, literally damn near bulletproof. Every good vid needs a couple of laughs at the end. And say safety catches on. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Happy Gilmore style, style eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't play golf. <laughs>